so in today's class we will be discussing about chikungunya so chikungunya is a viral disease which is mainly transmitted to the humans by the infected mosquitoes so the disease which can cause fever as well as severe joint pain in an individual the other symptoms of chikungunya includes muscle pain headache nausea fatigue and rashes over the body so let's see the transmission of the disease so the virus is usually transmitted from human to human by the bites of the infected female mosquitoes and these female mosquitoes are usually the aedes aegypti mosquitoes so after the bite of an infected mosquito so the symptoms usually begins within 4 to 8 days and sometimes it can range in between 2 to 12 days so this is the incubation period of the disease and regarding the pathophysiology so following the bite of the infected uh, aedes mosquito the virus will be injected into the dermis and from the dermis to the uh, connective tissues epithelial cells and where the virus usually uh, start to replicate and in addition uh, after the replication there will be a phase will develop that is known as viremic phase which means the presence of virus in the blood which usually take place in between 5 to 7 days okay at this time the circulating monocytes are responsible for the dissemination of the viruses into the blood stream so the acute phase of infection is mainly characterized by strong type 1 interferon response by the infected fibroblast strand and other cell types so this response is usually a short duration and uh, this is mainly limited to the viremic phase and it can be more most commonly seen among the infants so following this stage there will be the development of the clinical manifestations take place and let's see what are the major clinical manifestations of chikungunya so chikungunya is mainly characterized by an abrupt onset of fever which is frequently accompanied by severe joint pain so the other common signs and symptoms include muscle pain then headache nausea fatigue and the rashes over the body so the joint pain is often very severe but usually it may last for few days and it can prolong up to weeks and apart from that the other symptoms include i already said you rashes there will be back pain and joint pain the child may be having the symptoms of vomiting there may be increased body temperature chills then nausea and headache so that's again explain there will be eye pain and some children they may be having the complaints of conjunctivitis then joint immobility usually in the wrist and ankles and now let's see the diagnosis how we can diagnose the disease condition so the diagnosis mainly based upon the history collection so in the history uh, the physician can ask information regarding where the child usually live or whether they have had a travel history to the uh, chikungunya endemic area that history can be collected then go for a physical examination in the physical examination the presence of rash then joint pain then nausea vomiting headache everything can be assessed then chikungunya should be suspected when a child present with high grade of fever which is acute onset then presence of rashes or in presence of joint pain or any edema over the joints then the chikungunya diagnosis become more likely if the child has visited the uh, area or lived in the area where chikungunya is endemic and regarding the laboratory diagnosis of the disease so the lab, uh, laboratory confirmation of the chikungunya is mainly based upon the virology and serological studies so during the first 5 day of infection the virus can be found in the blood by the reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction okay then in small uh, in in certain samples obtained later so the enzyme linked immunosorbent assays can also confirm the presence of igm or igg anti chikungunya antibodies then igm antibodies appear between 2 to 7 days after the onset of the symptoms whereas igg antibodies are usually found in the blood following the first week of the infection so as per the who uh, both serological as well as the virological samples has to be collected during the first week as well as the after the onset of the symptoms so igm antibodies will be usually peak at 3 to 5 weeks after the onset of the symptoms and they may usually start to decline 2 months later but they can persist in the blood for many years and regarding the treatment there is no specific as such treatment for chikungunya uh so therefore uh, it may, the management usually focusing upon adequate hydration antipyretic drugs as well as the analgesics so some experts they recommend that uh, nsaids like salicylate drugs has to be withheld because they may increases the risk for internal bleeding 
and this in order to avoid the bleeding manifestation nsaid is to be avoided so uh, sometimes these children or these patient they may be having severe joint pain in such situation we need to provide them nsaids along with the corticosteroids that is usually the uh, given drug is methotrexate so uh, recent studies research shows that this is effective and the one more another drug that is ribavirin so this ribavirin is an antiviral drug which can improve the uh, arthralgia or arthritis in some adult uh, category but they are effective upon the pediatric cases are still not known research studies are going on okay and the best way to treat chikungunya is in kids by getting plenty of rest staying hydrated drinking adequate amount of fluids then spending time indoor uh, for the indoor activities and relaxing and eating a healthy diet will also helps to increase their body function and the diet should include adequate amount of fruits vegetables that are loaded with vitamins minerals and various nutrients so regarding the prevention so keep the environment clean and fully clothed Uh, so this will helps to provide uh, protect the child as well as the adult from unnecessary mosquito bites then cleaning the stagnant water removing the garbage and staying in air conditioned rooms will also helps to protect from the mosquito bite then eliminate the immature larvae of the mosquito from the water by uh, giving certain sprays kerosene oil etc and may need good hygiene and wearing long gloves uh, when you taking care of uh, the people with the chikungunya in the hospital settings center okay so these all are regarding the preventive measures okay thank you